welcome basketball fans to Pollard Gymnasium for tonight's game between our visitors, Greenwood Christian Cougars and the Speedway Spark Plugs. As always, I'm here at halftime of the JV game where the Spark Plugs are down 14 to 10, joined by Coach Charles Bennett. Uh, Coach, let's go down. You've had one game since the Christmas break. Uh, let's go back to the Ritter game, and I was looking at the statistics, and other than maybe the fact that they hit a few more free throws, it looked like a very even game. It was a, it was an extremely even game. Uh, they shot uh, from behind the arc, though, that night. I want to say they were almost 50%, and they had not shot that well all year long. We'd seen them play three different times. Uh, but to their credit, you know, they made some shots. Mm -hmm. uh, to our kids' credit, um, we went in the game, knew we needed to control our turnovers, 10 turnovers. Um, and we had a couple of guys that did not shoot the ball as well uh, as we have in the past, but um, we had four bad possessions at the end of the first half. Uh, we were down two, went down 10, and then uh, battled back in the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, um, we actually gave up five offensive rebounds, which did not help our cause any. Uh, and then I think a couple of times we had it cut to four, but we just couldn't get over the hump from there. Um, it, it was, yeah. It was, a, it was a good game. Our kids battled. Like I said, in the first half, they shot the ball really well. Uh, but despite that, um, you know, a good rivalry game, a sure. uh, good game to go over there. But uh, never happy with the loss to Ritter, especially since we were 2-0 and in the conference at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're 2-1, and one, which doesn't mean we're out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we got to go to Lutheran in a couple weeks, um, not looking too far ahead sure. past tonight or Ron Colley next week in the county. But, um, you know, again, just try to keep that one loss in the, in the conference and see if we can't. Uh, stay in first place, but um, we certainly made it harder on ourselves. Yeah, you know, the other thing I was looking at, and you know I like looking at numbers, um, your team goals for every game, I was looking at the games that you played well and won, happens to be the ones where you achieve mo more of those goals. Talk a little bit about, I don't think we've ever done it, what your team goals are and, and how you do that. So going into the game, we have eight main team goals, four on defense, four on offense. Uh, one, we want to hold teams below 58 points. Um, our best defensive average of all time, state championship team, 50.1. Um, so we want, we want to be below 58. We want to get 58% of the rebounds. Why 58%? Uh, I think I read it someplace, uh, and it, they had done a study over time. And uh, generally speaking, whenever we do those two things, we give ourselves a really good shot to win. Uh, we also want to hold the other team below 40% field goal shooting. So um, in the games like Crawfordsville, we won. We met six goals. We met all four defensive goals, but they only shot 35% from the field. And it's amazing, too, like uh, Ritter only ended up shooting 42% overall. Had we held them below 40, it would have been four made shots. That's the difference in the game. So that's a big one. And then we want to always want to cause 13 turnovers, which we our group this year has done a very good job. Mm -hmm. Offensively, we want to shoot 45% from the field. 40% uh, from behind the arc, 70% from the line, and our assist turnover ratio, we want one and a half to one. So, uh, again, uh, we shot the ball well at Ritter. We were 42% overall. From three, we were like 25%. Free throw line, we were 65. Um, and our assist turnover ratio was almost one to one. But, uh, yeah, as you look down our team goals, and those are something that everybody can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, plug into. We also do a plus-minus chart. Coach mm -hmm. Murley's in charge of that. So, uh Kids can get points, not necessarily for the points they score, but if they get a deflection, they get plus one. If they take a charge, plus two. Offensive rebounds, plus two. Defensive rebounds, plus one. Uh, if you draw a foul, you get a point. So uh, we can judge some people on how they play in terms of plus minus points, not based on what they score, but what they do. So, um, And generally speaking, if we have four guys in double figures on our plus minus and we meet 14 goals, we're going to get a win. And you're right. Uh, the games we played well in, uh, we're right at four goals or more. And, and actually, every game we won, we've had four more guys in double points. So, You know, you're talking about the plus minus, and that's just a, a great storyline for, for anybody to watch that there are so many things you can do on the basketball floor besides scoring about everything that can help your team out. And I really like the plus minus. I know the, the Pacers this week, I noticed, had a, a game against the Bucks. I think it was the Bucks, which they won. All five starters were the minus. All the people off the bench were the plus. So it tells you that the bench players are extremely, extremely important. Well, and if you look at there's 10 guys on the floor, there's only one basketball. Yeah. So uh, the game is, you know, and I heard someone once say, too, if you take nine shots in the game and it's an average of nine, uh, one second per shot, that's nine seconds of the game. There's still another, what, 30 or what we play gosh 32 31 52 or 51 to go right. so yeah so it, there's a lot of things we can do and we and we got kids that that buy into that sure. too that you know um that you know uh 
that do those little things. So, all right. So you got a Greenwood Christian team coming in here tonight. Uh, very good for several years. Uh, there are at this time. I think I had it here a minute ago. They're six and three. They lost to Park Tudor. Very good team. Yep. Lost to Yorktown, a very good 3A team. They lost to Jennings County, a 4A team. Uh, they play a good schedule. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the Greenwood Christian Cougars. Well, they obviously, like you said, they're six and three, good record. Started off really well uh, at the Covenant Christian game. They lost one of their best players, Evan McIntyre. Uh, he's a he was going to be a junior, I believe, uh, left-handed player, real nice. Um, he actually broke his fibula. Uh-huh. Uh, they turned around the next night, though, and beat Lutheran. So mm-hmm. um, they did a very nice job with that. And then they played in a tournament against, you know, Yorktown, who's in a very good conference. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then uh, what Jen- Jennings County. Uh, Jennings County, yeah, who's a 4A school who's mm-hmm. also. So, um, you know, they are a team that uh, you, you will be impressed by. I mean, I, I think our kids play hard, but they mm-hmm. play extremely hard. I think their four perimeter guys are as good as four perimeter guys will play all year long. Mm-hmm. All of them can shoot it. Um, they're led by Max Boer, though, number 23. Mm-hmm. When you look out there, um, you're going to be amazed at how hard he plays, how under control he plays. He's never, he never gets flustered. He's always in control, and um, you know when he does those things. And then uh, they have a number 11, Cum- Cumber, Cumford. Um, he, he's he's very good too as well. And then uh, the Reed kid um, from the left corner, he's going to make the three pointer every time. So mm-hmm. just watch that tonight. Okay. Um, so, uh, but I think it's going to be a good battle for us. We're going to be short a guy because. Uh, Camden Bennett has uh, had pneumonia in his left lung and the ear infection is right. I blame his parents. I mean, I don't know who those people are, but uh, he's been out since last Saturday. And uh, But we're fine. Jazz Coleman's going to step up for us, Toby Cork, and then we're bringing up Kendrick Kaiser, who's played a couple of spot minutes, but uh, he's going to come in and play for us tonight. So I'm looking forward to a good battle. I'm looking forward to Devin Robinson, who, you know, we've sang his praises all year long, but um, he held Crawfordsville's best kid to zero points. Uh, Ritter's best kid to five, and then tonight he's going to draw Max Boer. So I'm interested to watch him play. So uh, it's going to be an entertaining game. Uh, I hope we can keep it close because you're going to play hard. Um, but I think it could be a great high school basketball game. Good, good. Uh, we'll be back. Thank you for those comments. We'll be back after the game with Coach Bennett with a recap of the game, and we'll be back in here just a little bit with the lineups for tonight's game.
Good evening, basketball fans. Ron Propes to my right, Tom Smith here. We are here in Morris Pollard Gymnasium in Speedway, Indiana, to bring you tonight's basketball game between the Greenwood Christian Cougars and our own Speedway Spark Plugs. Greenwood comes into the game with a record of six and three. Uh, we believe that they are ranked fourth in single A basketball. The Spark Plugs will enter the game with a record of three and four. Here's your quickly your starting lineups. First for Greenwood Christian, Jordan Tallman, a 5'10 senior at one guard. He is number one. Ben Comerford, a 5'9 junior, number 11 at the other guard. Noah Reed, a 5'11 junior, number 21, the third guard. At forward, Max Boer, number 23, a six foot one senior. And rounding out the lineup at forward, tallest player on the floor tonight for both teams, Greenwood Christian and Speedway, Reed Smith, number 32, a six seven senior. For the spark plugs, excuse me, one guard is Drew Metallic, a 6'3 sophomore. Uh, Drew is their second leading scorer. And also at guard is Devin Robinson, a 5'10 senior. Cameron Reich, the leading scorer for the plugs, is a forward at 22.5 points per game. And he will be wearing 55. Jazz Coleman, a 5'11 sophomore, will also be a guard, number 22. And Landon Short, number 24, Third leading score for the Plugs, averaging 10.7 points per game. Number 24, once again, at 6'4", senior Landon Short. Coach, talk to us a little bit about their schedule so far at Greenwood Christians. As you mentioned, they're 6-3. and three. Their three losses were to a really good Park Tudor team, uh, a very good 3A Yorktown team, and a good 4A Jennings County team. I found it, I didn't know what conference they were in, but they're in the Pioneer League. Uh, really some unusual group of uh, teams, Park Tudor, Greenwood Christian, Bethesda Christian, Seton Catholic, mention them in just a minute, University, Liberty Christian, Shortridge, Muncie Burris, Anderson Prep, and Indianapolis International. And as you mentioned, uh, Greenwood Christian, fourth in the state in single A, Park Tudor, Second in 2A, uh, Bethesda 7th in 1A, Seton Catholic 12th in 1A, Liberty Christian 17th in 1A. So they play a really good schedule. Uh, very, very fundamental basketball team. Coach Bennett said you're going you're gonna to enjoy watching them play from the standpoint of all the, thing, the old school type of things. And so I'm, I'm anxious to see them play very well coached. We get done here before the game. We'll talk a little bit about their past and uh, some of the competition they face in the sectional, which is really tough. Quickly, Seton Catholic has a NBA player. Desmond Bain, actually one of the top 15 players in the NBA, and of course Park Tudor had several as well. So, Jaron Jackson and Yogi Ferrell, absolutely. So now we'll have the national anthem.
Well, the Cougars have won three sectionals in their brief history. Their first sectional tournament was in 2007. Uh, they've won sectionals in 2014, 19, and 20. Last year, the state champions was Lutheran Saints, and Lutheran defeated Greenwood Christian in the sectional by four points. So even though they've got a short history, uh, some very good play over the years, and another really good team this year. One of the other teams in their sectional is Tinley, who won the state in 2017. So it's a loaded sectional. They play a great schedule. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing this team play. Well, obviously, their past has been successful. Um, and as you said, they played a tough schedule up to this point. Uh, once again, they are six and three. Plugs are three and four. And the plugs will be without one of their critical players tonight, Camden Bennett, as we understand. Due to illness. And then had a pneumonia in one lung and uh, bad ear infection. He's okay now, but obviously not able to play. Hopefully, hopefully Wednesday for the county tournament. Once again, the height for the spark plugs drew metallic number three. As we said earlier, their second leading score at 13 points a game. Landon Short, 6'4", four, forward, 10-7 a game. And once again, leading scorer Cameron Reich, 22 and a half points a game. Cameron is 6'1", is also a senior. Plugs are coached by Charles Bennett. Greenwood Christian, coached by Jackson Williams. Their biggest win of the year, Tom, would have to be Lutheran. They defeated them on December 9th, 55 to 47, and Lutheran would be a favorite to win the state championship this year if you looked at them early in the season. Somewhat unique, we've got a 6'3 guard from Speedway jumping against a 5'10 senior. Um, toss that's, a little high. And that's one of the reasons why maybe 20, 25 years ago they that eliminated jump balls, but we only have one a game now. Spark plugs get the tip. Cameron Reich with the ball. Man-to-man -man defense by the Cougars. Jazz Coleman, the pass to Devin Robinson, Drew Metallic. I think they have scouted us, Coach. Yeah. Um, Jordan Tallman guarding Cameron Reich, face guarding him. Rebound, Reed Smith down the floor quickly to Tallman. Back out now to Max Boer. Coach Both Bennett teams, said both Max teams Boer, man to man defense. Max Boer would be a player to keep an eye on tonight. Shot blocked by Drew Metallic. And Metallic scores. And the plugs lead two to nothing. Drew's brother. Nathan playing at Wabash and starting at Wabash, in fact, uh, now and doing a nice job for Little Giants. Both the metallic boys are good examples of tall kids who have always been ball handlers. That's a big advantage. Mm -hmm. um, I know Nate was, I think, listed as 6'5 last year in the guard. Drew a 6'3 guard this year.
Devin Robinson with the foul. I think that foul bailed Greenwood Christian out because I believe they were really struggling and were about to turn the ball over. I think there's still a little football left in Devin Robinson. Yeah. I think there always will be. <laughs> he is a worker. Yes, yes he is. Jazz Coleman with a rebound. Gets it to Cameron Reich. This is the first time you've watched one of our games on TV, number 32 for the Spark Plugs, who we're talking about, Devin Robinson. Great kid, good athlete, really good football player, and a hard worker in basketball. Metallic with the miss shot inside. Greenwood with the turnover. Hit. Robinson with a field goal. So plugs with an early four to nothing lead. Nice cut by the Cougars, 23, Max Boer. Now they've changed defensively. Who's guarding Cameron Reich? Now number 11, Ben Comerford. They're not guarding him, face guarding him like they were. Reich with a three-pointer, no good. Jazz Coleman with the rebound. Drew Metallic with a three-pointer, no good. Four to two, spark plugs, 424 left in this first quarter. Looked a little like Drew rushed that shot just a little bit, the reason it came up short. Yeah, he did. Didn't have much arch on it. Boer with a three-pointer, and that's his fifth point. You called who we need to be looking at there, Coach. Well, something will give a little bit tonight. Speedway's averaging 60 a game. Greenwood Christian giving up 48. Comerford with a field goal. Seven straight points for the Cougars. Two three zone now by the Cougars. Cameron Reich with a field goal. Got to get back. And we've got a foul on Landon Short. You know, there's nothing, nothing more frustrating as a coach than to not get back on defense. Happens at all levels, happens in the NBA. And the Pacers take advantage of that several times a game. Reed Smith with the missed free throw. So the plugs with two fouls, no fouls yet on the Greenwood Christian Cougars. Misses the second. Into the game for the spark plugs. Number 30, Kendrick Kaiser, and he will replace Jazz Coleman. Boer will inbound for the Cougars. Posts up on Devin Robinson. Reverses the ball to the other side of the floor. Stepped out of bounds. Ben Comerford with a turnover for the Cougars. Now a little three-quarters court pressure by Greenwood Christian. Turnover by the plugs leads to two points by Jordan Tallman. You mentioned Camden Bennett 
not playing tonight because of illness. And, uh, spark plug bench is not very long to begin with, but coaches shuffling guys in and out here early in the game, getting everybody some time handling the ball. Foul was on number 34. We do not have a name for him. Metallic with the ball. Devin Robinson. Good defensive play. Kendrick Kaiser. Correction, that was Jazz Coleman. Cameron Reich for three is no good. Need some help. Boer has his seventh point of the game. It's 11 7 now with two minutes to go in this first quarter. Probably one of the big keys tonight will be on the ball defense. Uh, we, we can't let straight line drives. Because if we start over helping, they're going to get a lot of easy, easy looks. Drew Metallic short again on his three point shot. Boer scores again. Max Boer with nine points his first quarter. And that's going to be a foul on Jordan Tallman. Toby Cork in for the spark plugs number 20. Devin Robinson checks back in. You mentioned early coach that uh, need to keep our eye on Max Boer. How correct that is nine of the 13 points. Speedway will inbound the ball. Legs pass to Devin Robinson. Not sure anybody had the ball when that timeout was called. I don't either. I Coach Burley for the spark plugs thought the same thing as he kind of motioned to the official, but sometimes early in the game, it's good that you do get the ball. It was, it was their ball, but sometimes you don't want to waste those timeouts if you don't have to. This is the third season of, the, of this series, and Greenwood Christian has won both games. Last year was a close one. Uh, they beat Speedway 55 to 53. Ball inbounded to Noah Reed. Plugs stay with her man to man. Now Toby Cork will be guarding Boer. Wow. Nice move. The ball wouldn't go in a basket for Drew Metallic. I might watch our team in pregame warmups, and that's a move that our players go through on their layup drill, the same move that Drew had at that point.
Pally's shot is off at the buzzer and the plugs trail 13 to seven at the end of this first quarter. This is Greenwood Christian's first game since December 22nd. They were in a little holiday tournament. It's the night that they or they lost both games to Yorktown and Jennings County. So they've had two weeks off. Speedway, of course, played last Thursday night at Cardinal Ritter. We talked a little bit about that game with Coach Bennett. He thought that Cardinal Ritter hit some shots that up to this point in the year they haven't, but he gave him full credit. Of course, there, Cardinal Ritter is a sexual opponent, I believe. Plex's next outing will be here Wednesday night, although we do not do that game. It's the county tournament. Uh, I guess Indianapolis Round College. Is that Wednesday night or Tuesday night? I can't remember. January the 9th. But then we go through a we go through a big stretch of tough games. We've only, as they said, we've only played seven games in the season. Question in the scoring or I don't know. Coach Bennett is talking to I don't know what the, what happened. scores table soon enough or something to get into the game. And I don't know what the rule is. It used to be where you had to be in the game for the uh, for a time when the clock was running and perhaps he was going to enter at the end of the quarter and did not get in and they took him out. I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. Very disciplined on offense. They run, as you can see, a little shuffle cut. And Number 13, Aliou Cisse has guarded Cameron Wright most of the last part of that first quarter. Two-pointer for Cameron Reich. Those are tough shots. The step back. A lot of high school players, that's not a shot you want a lot of players to take. That's a one that you don't work on that much. The percentages go down, but Cam is strong enough, especially in the lower body, that it doesn't affect him that much. Both teams, Coach, have had some passes that I'm not quite sure who they were throwing to. Uh, as I say, both teams have been guilty of it in this first quarter, plus two minutes of the second quarter. Greenwood averaging 54 game points a game. Offensive rebound by Cisse. 
Well, that's something when a team is this patient and you just hate to see his offensive rebound because you made one good stop and now you got to go through the whole process again. Boer on the drive, comes up short, Landon is short with a rebound. Short on the drive and he is fouled. On Reed Smith, his first, Landon Short will be at the line for two free throws. Landon on his season, better shooter from the field than he is a free throw line. He's 48% from the line, but he hit the first one. With Reed Smith on the bench, with Reed Smith on the bench for the Cougars, it's a really short lineup they have out there. Max Buer at 6'1 is their tallest player. Maybe the Spark Plus can take advantage of a taller lineup in there and pound the ball inside a little bit more. I know Reed Smith has affected a couple of shots inside yeah. so far. Greenwood Christian brought a nice crowd tonight to the game from the south side. A lot of fans. And as we said earlier, relatively new school with a short history, but a good history so far in both boys and girls basketball. Landon Short will be at the line for his second free throw. Gets the second. It's a good sign. And with Reed Smith on the bench, you're seeing a little bit different of an offense run by the Cougars. A little bit of five out, no post people. But as you said, another turnover. And some of that could be rust. They haven't played for two weeks, but we're into the second quarter now. I know from Greenwood Christian standpoint, they, they were hoping that the rest would be off by now. Landon short on the drive. A call for the offensive foul. Short second foul. Three point shot attempt by Ben Comerford, Cameron Reich. Back to face guarding Cameron Wright. Greenwood Chris is very well schooled on man-to-man -man defense. And I think it's going to be difficult for us tonight to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one moves. I mean, Cam Wright, I think I can, but we're going to have to get a little bit better ball movement, reverse in the floor, get more people involved. Field goal by Max Boer, his 11th point of the game.
got a foul on 21 Noah Reed three point shot that will send metallic to the line for three. Drew the season 73.2 percent from the line. And I did not jinx him. Thank goodness. <laughs> Drew has a good form. His release is very low. Even though he's tall, I think sometimes it's hard to get that shot off because that release is right around his shoulders. And it may be the angle where we are, but his shots look flatter than. Yeah, I think they are. Coach Ben's got to be happy so far with the defense. I don't want to say it too soon. So Greenwood Christian doesn't get on a run here, but they've defended pretty well. We had replay. I'd like to see if that hit the back. I of think the it did <laughs> hit it. It changed directions. That's it what they always look for in it football. It should have been Speedway's ball, I think. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, I thought it was very obvious it hit the backboard from behind. Two old coaches couldn't be wrong. <laughs> yeah. As I said, a short lineup in there right now. Plug's got to take advantage of some bigger people on the floor. Talek on the miss, gets his own rebound, yeah. and scores. <laughs> foul was on Noah Reed, his second foul. Talek will be at the line, was two for three the last time he was there. Short again on the free throw. So it's 15 15. Two minutes 50 seconds remaining in this first half. Well, Max Boer has 11 of their 15 points, but he's not selfish. Now, uh, good shooter. Oh. Three pointer. Ben Comerford. That was a good, if you're a green a Christian fan, that was a good possession. They're always good when they end up with points, but they took care of the ball, probably made 15 passes. Devin Robinson for three, no good. Brewer brings the ball up the floor for the Cougars. Got a rebound here. And that's going to be a foul on Jordan Tallman. That'll be his second. Talek will be back at the line again. Two for four so far from the free throw line. That looks smoother. Yep. Three for five. Kendrick Kaiser comes in for the spark plugs. Landon Short, who has two fouls, will 
take a seat. Good move by the Speedway's coaching staff. Metallic hits again. 18 17 in favor of Greenwood Christian Cougars. Oh, two in a row for him. Second three for Ben Comerford. We would like to give you some statistics for Greenwood Christian, but we weren't afforded any of those before the game. It was a little disappointing. It's always nice to know. So you give your fans who's, you know, what percentages players are shooting and Nice free throw. That's a first, to my knowledge, of, of that happening yeah. in all the years we've done that. But we have no idea. It appears that it would be Max Boer. Uh, don't know how many he's averaging. 40 seconds, still half. 21-18, Cougars lead. Nice cut. Good cut. Field goal by number 40. Here once again we have no name for a number 40. The last field goal for Greenwood Christian. Got to get one up, Cam. That was a bomb. Good half. The end of the first half of play with Greenwood Christian in front, 23-21. We'll be back with some halftime stats and a few comments about the first half.
We are back here at halftime at Speedway High School. The Greenwood Christian Cougars 23, the Speedway Spark Plugs 21. Here's your scoring for the first half. Jordan Tallman of Greenwood Christian has two. Ben Comerford has eight, including two straight three-pointers there in the second quarter. Max Boer has 11. Uh, Finn Sartre has two, and that's their total of 23. They scored 13 points the first quarter, 10 points the second quarter. For the spark plugs, Drew Metallic has eight points. Devin Robinson has two points. Cameron Reich has nine points. Landon Short with two points for the spark plugs. Total of 21, seven the first quarter, 14 the second quarter. So coach kind of a methodical, patient, some turnovers, but certainly patience on the part of offenses uh, in that first half. Yeah, it looks like uh, Speedway was 6 for 20 from the field, Greenwood Christian 10 for 19, but the plugs 7 for 10 from the line, and Greenwood Christian has not scored from the line. Uh, you know, kind of piggybacking on what you just said, I know there's a lot chatter in this age about shot clocks in high school, and every time there's a game that Probably legitimately somebody just holding the ball for four, five, six minutes. I understand that. But for the thousands and thousands of games that are played, I would not have wanted to see a shot clock in a game like this, even though some of these possessions have gone more than 30, 35 seconds. Uh, I do think, though, that probably down the line it's going to happen, and that's going to add a lot of different things. to. It's got an additional scorekeeper. Um, just a lot of different things. Well, Coaching is going to change. And in my view, for high school basketball, it's going to give a big advantage to the bigger school. Absolutely. Uh, and and part of the strategy of basketball was being patient. Like when I was coaching, we played Ben Davis. You couldn't run up down the no. floor for them, and it's going to force teams to take shots uh, that they might not take. Uh, and I think it gives a bigger advantage oh, absolutely. to bigger teams which I, I hope the IHSA doesn't go to that but I it, you're right it very well may be headed in that direction and got we've... a clock issue field goal by Drew Metallic ties the game at 23 all One more stat from the first half. Speedway, eight rebounds, three turnovers. Greenwood, Christian, ten rebounds, seven errors. Rightfully so. The ball was kicked and was taken out of bounds where that happened, not underneath the basket. Boer, Max Boer hits his first field goal of the second half, gives him 13 points for the game so far. Good pass. Metallic scores. And we're tied up at 25. Drew's taking advantage of being guarded by a smaller guy and being able to get to the into the side the paint to get short shots. Be interesting because they've switched Devin Robinson on to Max Boer. Coach Bennett was talking to me earlier in the game before before the game started about how good a job Devin did on the best player from Crawfordsville and how good a job he did against a player from Ritter. So no surprise that he would draw that assignment. Basket counts. Jordan Tallman. He'll have a chance at the old-fashioned three-point play. And converts. The foul was on Drew Metallic. That's his first foul. Devin Robinson brings the ball up the floor for the plugs. Landon short with a move. It's blocked.
Biggest lead for either team tonight was Greenwood Christian had a 13-7 lead early in the first half, so biggest lead of theirs was six. Spark plug, biggest lead was four to two. Boer with five this half so far. They jump out to a 31-25 lead, the Greenwood Christian Cougars do. At this point, I think I'd like to see one of our Landon Short or Cam Wright post up inside, because I don't think, or even Devin Robinson, I don't think they could stop us on a post up. Jazz Coleman short on his shot inside the paint. Boer misses. Comfort oh. hits. Comerford's 11th point, and all of a sudden we've got a nine-point deficit for the plugs. I believe that was his third three-pointer of the game. Yeah, that was, that was fast. That was about a minute and a half. Score was tied. Boer just looks like a player that offensively, when it came gut check time, could take over a game. Been very unselfish so far. But he's a good shooter. Uh, as they say, a three-level score. Can go inside, shoot 15-foot jump shots, and obviously he's good from three. While he hadn't had to go to the free throw line, we've always talked about good shooters are usually good free throw shooters yep. as well. So he has 16 of their 34. Comerford has 11 of their 34. Spark plug field goals this quarter have both been scored by Drew Metallic. So a two point deficit at halftime has stretched Two and a half minutes to a nine point deficit for the plugs. Devin Robinson brings it down. Double Cam Reich. Get the ball to Metallic. He yep. hits his third field goal of the quarter. Drew now with 14 points. Depends on how things play out from here on out, but that could, at the end of the game, that could end up being a really big basket. They were on a nine-point run. That was a good call. I don't know if you saw it in the paper this week. Official Casey Gaynor has refereed a game in every high school gym. Well, every school right now presently in the HSA, which what a, what a, what a great goal, what a great accomplishment. Not mistaken, I think my son played basketball and football at Municipal Gardens with Casey Gaynor. Oh, wow. Yeah, he graduated of Ritter. Cam Reich for three. No good nice landing pass. short good with a rebound pass. and a nice pass to Devin Robinson. It's Robinson's fourth point. Plugs cut the deficit to five. And that fouls on Drew Metallic. His second foul. Drew is tall enough and long enough that a lot of those, he could almost just go vertically straight up and have his arm straight up, and it'd be very difficult to shoot over the top of him. And Sartre misses his first free throw.
Misses the second. Landon Short comes down with a rebound. You know, one of the tough parts for a guy like Cam Reich, who's a shooter and has a shooter's mentality, when they're guarding you the way they're guarding him, you just don't want to start taking bad shots. You want to work as hard as you can to get good shots, continue to get good shots, because they've they've sold out on guarding him, yes. face guarding him. And while you just can't accept the fact that they're going to not, I'm not going to get my shots, you've got to continue to work for a hard shot just like he did there, give up the ball. And we've got a foul. Foul. 21, Noah Reed, that's his third foul. Alou Kassay replaces Noah Reed. Cameron Reich now with a ball for the spark plugs. Once again, he averages 22.5 points a game. Giving it up now, Devin Robinson, and he misses his three-pointer from the corner. Max Boer on the drive down, peels out, being guarded by Drew Metallic. So it'll be interesting to see with Drew guarding him, a little taller player than was guarding him the first part of the ball game. Good hustle by Cam Reich. The spark plug ball, 34-29 now, 2.48 remaining in this third quarter. Drew Metallic with the field goal. His eighth point of the quarter, 16th point of the night. Good really hustle by Landon Short. Drew's really taking advantage of smaller guy guarding him, which is what you got to do on the matchups. Yep. And Cameron Wright, like we said, is doing a good job of not being selfish yep. and taking bad shots. And when he gets doubled, he's getting rid of the ball to somebody that, that should be open. And that's part of the growth process for players like him. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got young people out there watching and you're the star on your team, give it up and make your cuts and go get some offensive rebounds and do other things. Don't give up on shooting the ball, but continue to work to do that. But don't be selfish because you want to get your points. We had that discussion before the game with Coach Bennett. We we're talking about the plus minuses that the team keeps track of every game and. How many things you can do to affect the outcome of a basketball game? Obviously, you want somebody's got to score. But there are so many other things, and yeah, you know, I always go back to that. Probably bring us up every year, but if every player had equal possession of the basketball in a game, which they don't, everybody would have the ball 10% of the time. Again, which they don't. What are you doing the other 90% of the time to help your team out? And they're right. Good players know how to spend the other 90 percent. Right. Players that have not matured yet don't don't really understand that, and it's just part of the ESPN and things that you see. The only thing that matters is scoring, and it's not. You know, just like the play that got us the ball back there, Landon Short hustled down yep. the floor and knocked it off a Greenwood Cougar, Greenwood Christian Cougar player that got us the ball back. Now it looks like they may have gone to Drew Metallic to double. Jazz Coleman. That's a tough shot. Nice hesitation move. Good block. Good block by Drew Metallic. Ah. A turnover of the plugs. Just Once a again, bit, by three. Just a bit late. I don't think we want to leave him open. 
Eli Jackson for his first points of the game. I tell you, I really Stone like that, way Tom. Inside. I like our scores. strong kids taking the ball inside. That's where we have an advantage. Nice play by Landon. Foul on 34, Eli Jackson, his second. Yeah. Three-point play by Landon Short is his fifth point. The plugs close the gap to two, 36-34. And that's going to be Landon Short's third foul. You know, that's a good call on the referee's part. The player could have shot the ball and got two free throws, and which he should have, but he actually was not shooting. Max Boer comes up short with his jump shot. And we're going to have a foul on Jordan Coleman. That'll be his third foul or Tallman excuse me that'll be his third foul Landon Short is going to go to the line for two short four for five so far a correction four for four for the night right now Noah Reed returns for the Greenwood Christian Cougars. Toby Cork returns for the Spark Plugs. That's it. And we are tied at 36, so we made up the nine point deficit we had. What you want to see from one of your better players, Coach. I just watched Cam Reich, and he's cheering on. Mm -hmm. It took Cam Reich and Landon Short out for the rest to make the in between the quarters a little longer rest for those two guys. Standing up cheering. College coaches would tell you that that's one thing they notice in games is what players are doing when they're on the bench. Wow, oh, nice cut. Beautiful. Jazz Coleman. Beat back door. It's the end of the third quarter. Greenwood Christian 38, Speedway 36. Spark plugs, good response. With 527 to go, they were down by 934 to 25. But at that point, outscored them 11 to 4 going forward. And a lot of their success were, I don't have a shooting chart, we don't do that, but shots inside the lane. Not really post up moves, but dribble penetration, taking advantage of height. Because when Reed Smith is not in the game, The Cougars, much smaller on the court, much smaller, much smaller than the, the, uh, the uh, spark plugs. So 15 points scored by each team that quarter. 38-36, still a two-point lead for the Cougars. You know, you and you called it when you said that was an important play when Drew Metallic scored, and then the next time Landon Short saved a, uh, what would have been a basket for Greenwood Christian, and that got us four straight points. And 
You called it exactly well, right I think, about an important one little single and, play and I, makes it. I difference. think in the past we've had trouble stopping the bleeding in games. I think last year there were some times when we were really competitive but couldn't stop those. Nice try. <laughs> Thirty-eight all. Early here in the fourth quarter. Landon Short, good help. <laughs> Noah Reed with the jump shot and hits it. His first points on the night. Very patient offense. Got a good shot. Knocked it down. Landon Short's going to go back to the line again. Foul on 34, Eli Jackson, his third. Five for five up to that point. Now five for six from the free throw line. Plugs trail by two. Tally comes up with the oh, offensive pass, rebound and a nice pass. feed to Devin time. Robinson. Very unselfish nice assist. play. Nice assist by Drew Metallic. And we've got a tie score again. That's a good call, Tom. He was not, he was there, but he was not squared up. He was turning. And from the amount of time I got to play as a freshman at Miami of Ohio, I got to play for the very reason of taking charges. And Big difference between what you just said, turning and trying to and standing there and getting run over. Yeah. Uh, Out of the way, Drew. Drew Metallic hits the free throws. The plugs lead by two. Yeah, I think it, one of the big differences here in the last six or seven minutes is. We're taking the ball inside. Again, not a lot of post step on the offense, but dribbling to the inside, uh, getting the ball in the paint. We're taller than they are. We're Actually, we're stronger than they are. They're having a hard time stopping us inside. And I think one of the other keys uh, up to this point in this quarter, anyway, is Devin Robinson on Max Boer. A little more muscle, a little more weight, trying to keep him away from the basket. No doubt he's a good shooter, and they'll have to pay a lot of attention to him the last five minutes and 24 seconds of this game. But you're exactly right on our scoring. Our scoring has all come from inside the paint. 
Offensive rebounds and drives to the basket. It's really a plus when you have a guy like Devin Robinson. You have a player on your team that takes on that challenge of stopping the opponent's best player. Uh, not a lot of guys are willing to do that. Cam Reich with a near steal. Wow, that's nice play by Max Boer. Yeah. We were tied again at 42. Had to work hard to get an easy shot on that one. And Short got an opportunity there to post up. Short takes the basket, leaves it short. We've got a jump ball. Coach Williams jumped up to call a timeout. It was their ball anyway, but I think they have got the ball and it's he did call the timeout. Yeah. So 42 42 421 left in the fourth quarter of a game that's seen Greenwood Christian lead by nine. The spark plugs tied it up and then went ahead. And now we've got the uh, score tied once again at 42. Leading score so far for Greenwood Christian. Max Boer with 18. For the Speedway Spark Plugs, it is Drew Metallic with 20 points. Cameron Reich, Speedway's leading scorer has not scored in this second half, and he's going to get called for a foul there. First foul of the quarter on the spark plugs. Again, we don't have any statistics for Greenwood Christian, but I, I would imagine they're probably a pretty good free throw shooting team. Hopefully we can keep them out of the bonus. Good steal. Good steal by Landon Short. Good steal. Metallic with two more. Once again, that biggest lead of the night for the plugs. Two points. That is Ben Comerford who is down. I didn't see what happened. I didn't either. Looks like maybe leg cramp. It looked like the way they were stretching the leg out it was. And it should be noted too that I believe it's Evan McIntyre for the Cougars had an injury earlier in the season. Was They were counting on him to be a big contributor. Yeah, what they're doing right now is leg cramps. Yeah. All it takes is one time coming down on that, and that is. Apparently he didn't drink his pickle juice this morning. <laughs> and the only reason I know that is on Friday nights, Coach Pelly in the locker room would have, or not in the locker room, in the cafeteria would have a big gallon jar of pickle juice for his 
players to drink at lunchtime. Never heard of that. I I hadn't either. I'm not sure there's any And I'm not sure medical. Coach Pelle had either. But. I'm not sure there's medical support behind that. But you know what? So many times it's it's in what you're thinking in your mind that's Plugs up by two, three and a half to go. Now they're face guarding Drew Metallic. Nice pass, get in there. Good, good possession, good shot. Max Boer comes up short on the little jumper. Be really good to have it. Great possession here to get a bigger lead than two points. Ah. We're going to have a foul on the Cougars. Nice pass from Jazz Coleman to Landon Short. 21, Noah Reed on the foul. That is his fourth foul. Landon Land. short at the line. Hits the first of two. His eighth point on the night. Yeah. And another. And the plugs have a four point lead. If you're on the speedway end right now, you're going, let's get another stop. A little bit unusual. Jazz Coleman now guarding Boer. A little surprised they're not posting Boer up. He's got a height advantage on Jazz. I think that was on Landon Short. Is that correct? That's Landon Short. And that's his fourth. Oh. Completes the three-point play. And now the lead is shrunk to one. Nice cut. Up. That's going to be an offensive foul on Devin Robinson. Both teams, three fouls, one more free one. Hey, they're, they're getting us really spread out, Tom. I, I know we got to be aware of their shooters, but. Very patient on offense. One minute, 10 seconds to go. That was a lot of activity in that 15 seconds. One minute and one second left. Ben Comerford comes back into the game. Plugs lead by one. This is really a, a good high school game. Be careful here. <laughs> Boer hits the 17 foot jumper for a one point lead. 40 seconds left in the game.
That, that one I would agree with. If the first one I did not. 27 seconds left. Plugs trail by one. Coach Bennett's going to take a timeout. Well, it always... So our next foul, they're going to be in the one-on-one. Yeah. Half-court execution. Uh, close games at the end of the game basically says it all. But plenty of time left. Try to get 10 seconds, 15 seconds, try to get a steal or something, yeah. and then we got a foul. And not foul Max Boer. No, we got plenty of time. I don't I think we'll wait till at least half court, maybe even deeper than that. Well, the bad. Oh. I think we actually got a, not a bad break on that, but I think we had a breakaway layup. Taz Coleman was looking down the floor. 18 seconds remain. That's the fifth foul on Noah Reed. Plugs down one. We'll be shooting if there's a foul. Counts. So plugs go down, 47-46, an exciting end to that game. Yes. But the plugs come one up one point short, 47-46. We'll be right back with the scoring from tonight's game.
This is Tom Smith and Ron Probst back here at Morris Pollard Gymnasium tonight where the spark plugs fell one point short, 47-46 to the Greenwood Christian Cougars. Here's your scoring for the evening for Greenwood Christian. Jordan Tallman had five points, Ben Cam Comerford 11, Noah Reed three, three big points in that fourth quarter. Max Boer, their leading scorer with 20, Eli Jackson with two. Finn Sartre with four for their total of 47. For the spark plugs, the leading scorer was Drew Metallic with 22. Devin Robinson had six. Cameron Reich had nine. And Landon Short had nine. So, Coach, a tough loss for the spark plugs. Um, for the most part, they played well. Uh, they had a lead at the end, a four-point lead, and let it slip out of their hands. Um, but a tough loss. They did a good job on Cameron Reich. He ended up with nine points. Uh, that kind of freed up Drew Metallic, who had 22. Uh, Landon Short played a nice basketball game, too, as did Devin Robinson. Those were the only four people that scored for the spark plugs tonight. Your thoughts? Uh, Speedway looks like 15 of 42 from the field. Greenwood Christian 20 of 39. Plugs out, rebound them 18 to 17. Um, I think we found out something though tonight, and I'm not going forward. I don't really know much about personnel, the teams that are coming up. But I think we found out that we got some mismatches in our favor on our team, and Drew Metallic is one. Most nights he's going to have a shorter player guarding him, and whether he takes it off the dribble to get inside or he posts up inside, he found out tonight he can score over – people and he's not the only one Landon Short can do that we spent the whole second half basically uh, other than maybe the last possession the whole second half inside the paint and I think going forward that's certainly something that we can build on again you're not going to have that advantage every game but when you do get to this point of the year you're looking for those advantages early in the year first half you're I don't know everybody's just kind of playing and seeing what's what's happening but now you're starting to figure some things out, and uh, I think going forward that could, that could be a big advantage for us. Well, we will be right back uh, and get some ideas and thoughts from Coach Chuck Bennett. Uh, when he gets up here, we will be right back.
Welcome back one more time to Pollard Gymnasium, where tonight the Greenwood Christian Cougars defeat Speedway by a score of 47 to 46, a game obviously that went right down to the, uh, to the wire. I'm here once again with Coach Bennett. Uh, Coach, I, me and I was, Tom Smith and myself were talking here after the game, and I thought, I thought we learned something tonight about some advantages that we have. And, and granted, when they had their six-seven kid on the bench, we had a major advantage in height. But we got a lot of shots inside the lane tonight. And the second half, I think we lived in the lane between uh, Metallic and uh, all of them. Um, I'm not sure that's what you saw in the game, but I think that was a big turning point. The, 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 the adjustments that you guys made to get that ball inside the way we did. Credit to our kids. I mean, um, we didn't go in and specifically say we wanted to do that, but uh, our kids are smart enough within what we're trying to do um, to figure out what's going to be open. Uh, they were unselfish, I thought. Um, there was no, uh, you know, get the ball to Jazz, pass to Landon. Mm -hmm. You know, we made ni some nice cross-court passes at times. We moved the basketball. Um, you know, I thought even though Cam Wright didn't score a whole lot, he was still doing a good job of handling the basketball. Um, yeah, so a testament to our kids just because they're smart enough to, um, you know, re realize what they're giving us. Right. So, uh, you know, proud of Drew Metallic. Uh, obviously um, missed a bad three in the first ha half, but mm -hmm. then, you know, okay, I can go to the basket. My length can get me there. Uh, take care of some of those things. So, yeah, uh, credit and testament to our kids. And I, we were just talking, I, I, unselfish play, obviously. A lot of great passes inside. You know, they, they were, we were well, they were well scouted us. And you could tell that Cam Wright, every time he touched the ball, and I thought he did a good job of handling himself tonight and was very unselfish. Um, so a tough loss. I know that uh, the next game is Ron Colley. Is that Tuesday night? Tuesday night in the county, yeah. And we do not do that game on TV. But since we're not going to be doing that game, just give us a little bit of a preview of what to expect from yeah. the now, not the Rebels anymore, the Ron Colley Royals. Royals. Uh, before we do that, I do want to, I mean, our kids, we were down nine at one point mm -hmm. in the third quarter. Uh, and I think that was at about 3.50 to go maybe. And um, came back and actually were up by four, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with some time to go. So, uh, again, just a testament to our kids battling now. Uh, we want results. Don't get me wrong. We want to make sure, sure. we get wins. But That was uh, a good team you played in. I'm just yeah. telling you, that's, that's a yeah. very good team. So, anyway, so, yeah, so uh, going to Marion County basketball, uh, probably I would argue the best uh, – high school tournament in the nation uh, i would I, not disagree i mean that straight high bit. school public high school uh yeah there are a few a uh, couple private schools mm -hmm. in there but it's one class doesn't matter so you know we drew ron collie they're 4a we're 3a uh, if we win we play the winner of warren central decatur central uh as you know a chance to go to southport on friday night and play in the final four uh in that field house uh but it's going to be tournament basketball too mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great mid-season tournament it's going to come down to uh, half-court offensive execution, half-court defensive stops, and rebounding. And uh, they've got two very good players. They have a six-eight sophomore averaging 12.7 rebounds, and then a kid named Drew Karagas, who is a senior guard for them, averaging almost close to 20. So um, I, I'm encouraged by our effort. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but to play in Marion County and play Maxwell, get a win, get to the final eight, and then see what happens the next night against Decatur or Warren, um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. And we talked to our kids. we got to come in and practice. We had two really good days of practice prior to today. I'd love to see that pay off for him, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, we'll get one tomorrow, Saturday. We, tomorrow, actually, we're starting our 23rd year of our power hour, which we've expanded to the 3 by 3 by 3 league. Uh, Coach Murley does a great job uh, with our youth stuff. We'll all be there, but we're going to – so we're going to welcome a bunch of first and second graders in tomorrow for the next four Saturdays. Uh, we got our sixth grade South Putnam team playing, South Putnam league playing. So, I mean, there's all kinds of good stuff besides what our kids are doing, and then uh, – I guess I'll address next time at Western Boone. We're actually going to start a basketball buddy program, and some of our kids are going to go to the elementary schools too. So uh, our kids are doing a lot of good things mm -hmm. off the court, but um, I think we're going to start seeing some wins come along on the court too. Well, good. Uh, this is the busiest time of the year, January, first two weeks in February. Just games, schedules packed with the games. Uh, our next boys game, as you mentioned, telecast will be January 20th against Western Boone. But we'll be back here tomorrow. Uh, to watch the girls play Crawfordsville. So once again, thanks to Bill P., Brian Pierce, Henry Johnson, Tom Smith, Charles Bennett, and myself from Pollard Gymnasium. Have a good evening.